Someone said this morning that the uh, scripture reading is really long today. And it is. <laughs> Do you notice, anybody notice why? 20 bucks if you can guess why. Jesus talking. Say again? Jesus talking. That wasn't Jesus talking. That's not the answer. That was, that was close. <laughs> I don't have 20 bucks on me. Close. Any other, any other guesses? Jesus telling where he's going to go. Yeah, he did, but that's not why. Again, my, my non-20 bucks is safe with me. One more guess. One more guess. Say it again? To fill up the page. We need it. No, that's not it either. Because that's where we left off back in July. We uh, actually went through the, the saying of Jesus, at least the word, the speaking of Jesus in July. And we went through verses 1 through about 14, 15. So I figured it's been so long since I've been here, let's get us back up to where we are. And so that's why that, I said, let's, let's read through it mm -hmm. so that I can just pick up where we left off. Yeah. So um, that's why I was long. Um, it's funny because I, we come here on a Sunday, and I think I might have said this last time or somewhere, but we come here on a Sunday and sometimes we forget why we go to church. Mm. And I tell you, I've been wrestling with that question for a good six years. Like, why do we go to church? Like, why do we do this thing? Because it can become routine. It can be just something that we do. We know Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, soon to be 10 o'clock, we show up at church. But well, why? And I was reminded, as, as I think I was traveling actually this morning, and I was just thinking... In Old Testament days, they didn't have access to the scripture like we do, right? They couldn't just reach on a shelf, open up a book, and read God's word. So the reading of God's word was something that was precious. And it's still precious, even though we all have access to it. But people would gather to hear the priest read a portion of God's word. Mm -hmm. And simply what the priest would do is read the scripture. Mm -hmm. They would read what the scripture says, and then there would be leaders or elders or whoever would be around the synagogue to, to help to explain what was read in case the people did not know or understand what the Lord was saying in prophecy or in whatever it is. They would, they would get understanding. My encouragement for us, myself included, is that we, we don't forget how precious it is to hear God's word. It's precious. And uh, as much as I appreciate the introduction and to know that you love me, this is, moment is not about me. And it is easy to, I, we've been, been to churches uh, when, when I got saved and my mom could vouch for it, where if the main preacher wasn't there, people would show up. And that still happens. When the main preacher's not there and you walk in the door, it's like, oh. <laughs> because sometimes we can forget that it's about the Lord's word and mm. we make it about a person. Mm. This is not about a person. This is about God's word. In fact, it is about a person. The person is Jesus. So for me, all I do is sit here and read God's word and hopefully give you understanding into what he says. Uh, last thing I'll say before I, I, I jump into John 14 is I, I realized, I guess about a year or so ago, there are not many churches that simply read God's word mm. and then dig into his word. Yes. And so I was convicted to, whenever I show up to preach anywhere, to read his word and let his word stand. Mm. Uh, particularly in the uh, Wesleyan tradition or Wesleyan Methodist tradition, you just don't have a lot of preachers that open God's word and read the scripture and simply explain the scripture. It's really popular to have this series and that series and this, you know, theme and this fancy, fancy thing. And not a lot of people are saying, let's read the scripture. Mm -hmm. And in fact, lately I've had, I've heard pastors do that and they apologize I'm sorry it's going to be a lot of scripture today and I'm like what else are we here for we want a lot of scripture so mm -hmm. I preface this message to say never minimize the importance of reading God's word amen amen, amen. Uh, who's recent who, who recently had an eye exam anybody recently had an eye exam eye exam how long ago 
Okay, six weeks ago. You? How long ago? Maybe about a month and a half ago. A month and, and a half? Well, it's about six weeks. About <laughs> 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 five weeks. Can I hit three? Can I hit three? Three? <laughs> when you go and have an eye exam, they, they make you cover one eye, right? And they make you read the In fact, we were talking about glasses this morning. And they make you cover, and I did an eye exam about two months ago. They make you cover one eye, and then they ask you, hey, what line can you see? And they ask you, read the line. And, and you know, the, the, the lower you get, it's the smaller the, 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 the word, the, I going to say number, the letters are. Yeah. Right? And then they have you do it with one eye. And then they say, cover that eye. And you got to do it with the other eye. And, you know, and then I guess they're trying to see how strong your eye is or what you can see or what you can't see. And then, you know, they do the lens thing and you look together to see, okay, read it again. And so I always try, I don't know if you're like me, but I always try to memorize it so that when, when, which probably goes against what they're trying to do. But I, if I memorize it, then I don't feel so bad when I can't see the, do you do that today? Do you ever do it? No, no, it's just me. I try to memorize it so I don't, I'm not embarrassed that I can't read the last line. I'm like, you know, making stuff up and you know, I'm thinking I got it. I'm winging it. Then the lights come on. I look, I'm like, oh, well, that was not a M. It was a G. I'm like, <laughs> Try. Um, how we see is important. Mm. And what we see is important. And I think it's cool that God gave the Christian the ability to see things that other people can't mm. see. It's good. It's hard. Mm-hmm. But it's really good. John chapter 14. I'm going to start reading at verse 15 and then we'll, we'll, we'll go. I'm going to try to get through the end of the chapter. Not sure if I'll be successful, but we'll try it. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments, mm-hmm. and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, mm-hmm. that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you mm-hmm. and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. Mm-hmm. I will come to you. Dear Lord, I thank you for your word. It's precious. I thank you for the opportunity to read, even, uh, to read your word out loud in the presence of believers. Mm-hmm. I thank you for the opportunity to understand your word and maybe help to open it up for us. I pray that in this moment, in this time, for the next 20 some odd uh, minutes, that you would allow me to disappear in this moment and allow your voice to be the voice that's heard. Lord, you know my preparation, you know the, the, the time that I put into this, and you know all this, the human effort that I've placed. God, I don't rely on human effort. I am asking you by your Holy Spirit to inspire me as the speaker, inspire us as the hearers. May your voice be the voice that we hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. The reading of the word should change us. It should change us. Uh, when we started this, the series is called Jesus Say. So all we're doing is we're looking at these passages where Jesus is speaking, the passages in red, and we're just seeing what Jesus said Mm -hmm. and what he said and what it means. We started by looking at him, John chapter 10, as the good shepherd, and we talked about how he protects us, he watches out, he cares for us, uh, he leads us, he goes first, we follow him, he's a good shepherd. Uh, Last time we we talked about how um, if we ask anything in his name, he'd do it. Uh, We talked about how he's going to prepare a place for us in the presence of the Father. And it's not that he's just building us a little mansion so that we can live well, but his sacrifice and his resurrection secures for us a place in the presence of the Father for eternity. And that thing about ask what you want wasn't, you know, ask what you want, you're just going to get it, just use in Jesus' name, and that's kind of the catch-all phrase. Because, Troy, if that was it, banks would go out of business. If it was just ask whatever I want, use in Jesus' name, and I get whatever I want, um, I like Big Macs. Anybody else like Big Macs? Oh, yeah. If, if the, in Jesus, you don't like Big Macs? They're too messy. <laughs> too messy? If, if, I, if in Jesus' name was the catch-all phrase, I would walk into McDonald's. Because when I was growing up, Big Macs were like $2.50. Now they're like $25. Like it, it, it's forever, you know, it's expensive. But I would walk into McDonald's and I'd say, can I have a Big Mac? 
in Jesus' name and just get all the Big Macs for free. That's not what Jesus was getting at. It was under his authority as his representative for his glory. So anything that you ask for his glory under his authority as his representative, he's going to do it because you're working with what he says. And then he gets here, and this is where we ended our scripture reading, and this is where I started. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Now, just think about that. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's an if-then. It requires something. If you love me, keep my commandments. In other words... It's like, a, it's like a parent who has a child, and the child lives at home, and the child is strung out on drugs and bringing drug addicts to the house, or the child is out there fornicating and bringing, you know, a girl or guys over the house or something like that, and the parent says, listen, if you love me, you'll stop that behavior because it's destructive. Or it's like a husband and wife who are sitting in, let's say, in a counseling office, and there's a counselor, and, and they're on the verge of divorce, and the counselor says, how can we fix this thing? And wife looks at husband and says, you know, if you love me, you'd stop working 16 hours a day and then going hanging out with your buddies and then coming home and just going to sleep. And then all weekend you're out playing golf or playing whatever, and then I never get any time with you. If you love me, you would spend some time with me. In other words, the way you behave or the way you act is going to show me whether or not you love me. So if you love me, your behavior will reflect it. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I put in air quotes, keep. The word keep means watch over, guard maintain, keep it from injury or loss, like keep my command. If you love me, keep my commandments. Every once in a while, we eat out in a restaurant. Yeah. And if you don't mind me saying, if, you know, I hope you don't mind, but at the end of the meal, my wife might go to the restroom and she'll say to one of the girls, hey, I'm going to the restroom, would you keep my bag, my purse, her expectation is when she leaves and then comes back, that purse is not stolen. No one's gone through it and took stuff out. It's not lost. You know, someone else isn't walking out the door with her bag. She said, would you keep my purse? Would you keep my bag? Would you maintain this so that when I return, it is in the same condition that it was when I left? You guys get that? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, guard them, maintain them, mm. so that when I return, they are in the same condition that I left with. All right. All right. Like, what I've asked you to do, do them and pass them down so that when I return, mm -hmm. what I said is still intact. Yes. It's still being maintained. We are still living according to what Christ has said. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. You know why that's difficult? Because we've got a culture that does not keep his commandments. In fact, we've got a culture that if we keep his commandments, they look at us and they say that we're odd. Yep. They look at us and they, they question why we hold to the biblical standards. Well, because Jesus said, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Pass them down generation to generation to generation to generation. Wherever you go, keep my commandments. Right. Live this out. But Jesus also says, you'll do that if you love me. Yeah. Yeah. Which implies that if we're not doing that, perhaps we don't love him. Yeah. <laughs> kind of tricky. Kind of tricky because it makes us really seek our heart mm -hmm. to see, do I really love the Lord? Mm. 
If you love me, verse 15, keep my commandments. Here's what's interesting. You ever talk to someone and they say, I don't believe in God? Don't believe in God. Matter of fact, uh, Juan, if I if I remember, your history was non-believer. Don't believe in God at all. There are people who can't fathom that there's a God. And for us, the Christian, we say, how can that be? Everywhere you look around you screams God. In fact, in history, it was never an issue of whether or not God existed. Not, that wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. It was just, well, let's, let's figure out who this God is. And then you got polytheism. And there must be many gods. There's a God over the wind, God over the sun, God over the moon, God over the sea. There's a lot of gods. And then, you know, there's a maybe uh, we're trying to figure out who the one God is. Maybe it's Allah. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's Buddha. Whatever. Who is that God? Now we've got a generation that said, there's no God. And the Christian says, how can I see it? And they can't see him. Why is it not obvious to everybody that there's a God? Verse 16. I will pray to the Father, mm -hmm. and he will give you another helper. Someone say that, helper. helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, has been introduced to us as a helper. Mm -hmm. But what does he help do? He helps to reveal God to us. When we become born-again Christian, God installs his Spirit mm -hmm. in us. Yes. Like he lives in us by his Spirit, which means when we're looking at the world around us, we see God at work. And for the believer, you see God wherever you go. You can identify it. You can see him in culture. You can see him in your life, your home, your school, your work. You can see God because you're informed by the Holy Spirit. Problem is, the world around you who does not have the Holy Spirit in them yes. does not see him. All right, all right. He says, I'm going to send you my spirit. So that he can abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Uh, the world around us, my friends, call lies truth and truth lies. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that? Mm -hmm. They believe what's wrong. They disbelieve what's right. Mm -hmm. They're upside down. Huh. Well, what are they missing? They're missing the spirit of of truth, which Jesus said he would send. Okay. Stay with me. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. In other words, your actions will follow what you say you love. Hmm. And here's what I'll do. It's not a, if you do that, then I'll send. He said, I'm going to send my spirit and I'm going to place my spirit within you, the spirit of truth, your helper, your counselor, who's going to live within you, who's going to help you to be able to see exactly what's going on from my point of view. Right. I'm going to sit in. And he's going to abide with you forever. He's the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you. Yeah. He will be in you. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Then he says this, verse 19. A little while longer mm -hmm. and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Mm -hmm. A little while longer, the world will see me no longer. Yes. But you will see me. Mm -hmm. See, the believer has a supernatural ability to see mm. God. Mm -hmm. Our job as Christians are to live according to his command and to demonstrate God to the world around us because mm. they can't see him. Mm. All right, all right. Yeah. Wow. Jesus says very practically, in a little while you won't see me, mm -hmm. but you will see me again. Physically. 
But spiritually speaking, in a little while, the world and culture around will not see him, but he'll show back up. And those who have followed him and who mm -hmm. follow his command, they will see him. Amen. And so God has asked us to live in a way that demonstrates and displays who God is. He says this, because I live, you will live also. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, at that day, you will know that I'm in the, my father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me mm -hmm. and he who loves me will be loved by my father mm -hmm. and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Mm -hmm. He mentions again this whole thing about loving him, keeping his commandments. Loving him, keeping his commandments. Having the word is not enough. Mm. Having the word is not enough. I bet you know people who say, I'm a Christian. And you look at their lives and there's no fruit. I bet you have people in your life who say, I go to church, and you look at their lives, and their life does not echo that. Doesn't demonstrate that. It doesn't show that. Right? Or am I the only one? I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> Jesus says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Having the word is not enough. It is not enough to just know the word. It is not enough to just know the commands of God. That is not enough. It's the one who keeps them, who guards them, who maintains them. That's the one who loves him. Jesus said this in, in Matthew chapter 7. Maybe you heard this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It is he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many wonders in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew 7, 21. Jesus says, not everybody who says that they're Christian are. How do you know? It's the one who follows or keeps his command. Amen. And what God has asked us to do is to know his commands, but to keep them. Yes. Not just have them, but to keep them, to live them, to yes. guard them, to pass them on, to us, uh, allow his word to abide in us as we abide in him. So that whatever it is that we've asked him is according to his will. He'll do that. Mm -hmm. But not everybody does that. No. It is easy to know God's word. It's easy to know his command. It is much harder to keep his command. Here's what I was convicted about as I was, I was prepping. For us, we can make an excuse to keep the commands that we like. Or the ones that we would keep anyway. Right? For me, I don't intend to walk into your local bank and hold them up and steal their money. So for me to not rob a bank, man, that fulfills his command, but I would do that anyway. You, you get what I'm saying? What Jesus says is, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Not just the easy ones that you are going to keep anyway, but how about the difficult ones? Mm -hmm. how, about the, how about losing your temper? How about being jealous? How about being lustful? How, how about lying? How about fornication? Like, how about some of those harder ones that you're like, ah. Uh, how about the times that we would make an exception? I can do this. God will forgive me. <laughs> All right. I wonder if our lifestyle is one where we make exceptions. Do we love him? Jesus had a way of lifting a bar pretty high. And what Jesus says is, the goal is not to take the bar and bring it low so that I can easily scale it. The goal is to see that bar and say, God, make me more like you and right. rise toward me. Right. 
Jesus says, if you love me, Amen. you'll keep yes. my commands. Yes. Yes. All of them. That means how we relate to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means how we relate to others. Yes. That means how we utilize our time. Yeah. How we utilize, utilize our resources. Mm -hmm. Whether we're praying. We've got in our bulletin here people to pray for and things to pray for. Well, it's easy to do that here because there's a leader that will say the prayer here. What about when we go home? Are we still praying? It's easy to care for the ones that we run into that we like. How about the ones that rub us the wrong way? Do we still love them? Jesus says, if you love me, keep my command. Because there's a world that's watching you. And that world can't see me. But man, if I put my Holy Spirit in you, mm -hmm. and you live according to my commands, All right. they're going to see me All right, through you. All right. Our, our, let's say our faith, our denomination, our um, theology, we talk about prevenient grace. You guys familiar with that term at all? Prevenient grace. P-R-E-V-E-N-I-E-N-T. Grace. Prevenient grace. It's, it's the grace of God. It's the, it's the action of interaction of God in humankind that draws man to him. Mm. And you can be drawn to him and not even realize what's going. It's God's grace that's saying, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of you. Many people think that the moment of salvation is because I came to the front, I said some words, and I walked out, and now I'm saved. And then you look at their life and you're like, nothing's changed. Mm. You said words, nothing changed. No, no. Well, that moment at the, at the altar might have been God drawing you, his prevenient grace. He's drawing mm. you to, he's saying there's, there needs to be some sort of change. And you might say, you know what? I think I need to get back in church. That doesn't happen because of you. That happens because of his prevenient grace. He's drawing you. Oh, cool. You might say, you know what? I need to get into a Bible study. I need to learn more about God. Well, that's not because... You know, you're all super righteous, God drawing. Mm -hmm. You might say, hey, I need to go to Bible school. Uh, you know, I want to make this a career. It's God's prevenient grace. He's drawing you. He's drawing you. But at some moment, one makes a decision for Christ to say, Lord, I want to follow you. All right. And when you make that decision to follow him, what you're saying is, I love you enough to obey your command. Your right. words. Mm -hmm. For us as believers, we've got to understand why we're here. We're not here to pass an hour on a Sunday. We're here to hear God's word, to see what does God have to say about whatever topic, mm -hmm. specifically about our lives as believers. <clears throat> what he said is that if we're going to really love him, it has to show. Yeah. How does it show? We follow, we keep, we guard his commands. And then we understand the world can't see him. You know, if they, if they took a God eye test, they'll miss it every time. And they're not even on the chart. And so we have to be the bigger letters. Well, how do we do that? Well, God pours his spirit in them. And when he pours his spirit in us, when he places his spirit, he lives in us. He's our counselor. He's our helper. He will abide in us. He will help us to live the life that God has called us to live. Mm -hmm. He strengthens us to do that. He does that. And then the world starts to see us and God through us. In fact, Jesus says, uh, we'll come back and we'll, I'll live in him. I'll live in you. Just like the Father was in me, I'll be in you. Like, we're going to be present in the believer to live this out. We're not to take the bar and bring it low, mm -hmm. make it easier to scale, but we're to see the bar and say, Lord, help us to rise up. That's mm -hmm. what God has called us to do. And it's funny, we're not going to get this today. We won't finish the chapter, of course. But Judas asks a weird question. Judas says, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and you're not going to do it to the world? Like, if, you're, if, if anybody needs to see who you are, why would you just 
show us, but you won't show the world around us. We as Christians, we get confused. Sometimes we get disappointed when the world does not act like Christians. Mm. Anybody in here? Get, we, get, we get disappointed when the world does not act like Christians. When the world sins, we get shocked. How can, why, why are they acting like that? I can answer that. Because they're sinners. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Now, when the believers act like sinners, that's what we should question. That. What Jesus has said is like this. Listen, there's a world that can't see me. There's a world that can't see who I am. They need to see me. They need to know who I am. How are they going to do that? By the way, my called out ones, my ecclesia, the way we live. Well, how are we to live? We're to live like we love our God. Well, what does that look like? We keep his commands. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Will we be perfect? Of course not. Is that an excuse? Of course not. Hmm. Of course not. I don't want to make excuses as to why I don't love my wife. I do. What I would need to do is love her. You get what I'm saying? We don't make excuses as to why we can't live out the Christian life. Well, here's my excuse. Can't dinner, can't dinner, because I'm human. No, 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 no. The bar is high. Rise to it. Yes. You can't do it on your own. That's why he sent his spirit. And his spirit empowers us. We have a world around us watching us. And they're not watching us for any other reason than we're all trying to get to the same place. I don't care what your political party is. We may not have political, uh, you know, uh, political views that all match up. But somehow we're hoping for peace in our world and peace in our land and to be able to live our lives good. And we're all trying to get there. Yeah. Right. I, I don't you know. All different religions, uh, you know, are trying to get to God somehow. And maybe we don't see eye to eye, but somehow we're, we're trying to get to God. And, and you name it, there's generations, every generation, you know, the younger generation pushes against the older generation. And I think we've always done that. Every generation has pushed against the older generation. And we look at the younger generation and say they are nuts. Like all of us, because we're all trying to get to the same place. We kind of want, you know, to live well and have our society go well. And like we're all trying to get to the same place. The problem is they don't know the way to go. So what God has done is he said this. The world can't see. But you can. Mm -hmm. So since you can see how you live matters. Well, how are we to live? We're to live like we love God. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Yeah. Our passion, our heart, our goal. Keep his commandments. If you don't know what his commandments are, they're in the book. They're in the book. Bare minimum, love God, love others. Another one, go out there and make disciples, preach the gospel. They're in here. My friends, there's a world that's watching. How we live matters. Don't let church moments reside or remain church moments. Mm -hmm. Let's live this out so that a world around us can see what we see. Would you pray with me? If you can, would you stand? God, I love your word. I love your word. Your word is true. It's obvious. It's maintained through history. And it sets a standard that's high. You didn't make an exception for these followers of yours. You said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He who loves me keeps my commandments, keeps my word. Lord, may we be a people who hold to your word because we love you. And if we can't, 
May we seek our hearts. And make sure that we do love you. If there's anyone in this room who has not given their lives over to you, may we do that today. And God, you promised you would give us your spirit. Oh, what a blessing. We don't even understand how good that is. Your, your spirit allows us to see what the world can't see. When we look around and people make statements or culture goes a certain way and, and, and they can't see how lost they are, Lord, by your spirit, we understand. Lord, may we share this message. May we share our faith. May we share your word. May we live this out in a time where the culture uh, stands against Christianity, Christ, God. May we be people who represent you honestly before a culture that desperately needs you. Lord, may we be ones that love one another, that gather together, that lock arms together because of our love for you. May we go into a world that's lost. May we show them who you are. Father, I thank you for your precious word. I thank you for this word spoken to these disciples here in John 14. I pray that as we continue to run through what you said, that we take it to heart and that it challenges us and changes the way we live day to day. Lord, may your blessing and your grace be upon each one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.